right, good morning everyone. Welcome back to the Two Stroke Turbo Channel. This is where you get your fill of micro cars, odd cars, orphan cars, and maybe even pet Stella, the shop dog. She's our seven year old Brittany Spaniel. She's a very good dog. She likes working amongst all the cars. We've got lots of cars to work on as well. We've got to pull the motor out of that Isetta, pull the steering column out of that Isetta, fix the charging issue with this 914. And since it's on the lift and it's a little quiet right now, I think we're going to not pet the dog. We're gonna talk about this 914. So this 914 is a labor of love. It's been off the road since 1996, almost 30 years being put back together slowly it's looking great the paint is done the rust is done the rust re repairs have been done and it runs engine's been rebuilt and i'm tasked with doing the final sorting and one of the final sorting issues is electrical and we've determined the car doesn't have any charging oh i need to grab that phone hold on all right, we were busy talking about our 914 Porsche here when somebody called, I had to take that call. So uh, if you're not aware of how a 914 charges, it's kind of complicated. There's a relay board here and where those three prongs are right there is where the relay goes. The relay looks like this. It's the voltage relay for the charge system, although it's not supposed to look like that. That's nasty. Um, so I thought because we weren't getting a light on the dash that the voltage relay might be bad. I got a new voltage relay. It's a little different. This is an electronic one. No more points and condensers. And I replaced the bulb on the dash, which is this little guy right here. Still nothing. So I dove a little deeper, did a few test tried to full field the alternator which means make the alternator work by bypassing the voltage regulator full fielding making the alternator work you know as hard as it can the alternator resides right down i'm gonna get the camera right down in there it's really difficult the book says six hours to remove the alternator i removed it in about three and took it out it's it is an older rebuilt it's been rebuilt by PMX, which was a uh, well-known rebuilder here in the Portland area some time ago. I don't think they're in business anymore. When I pulled this out, there's two, two connections. The main battery terminal here, which goes to the starter. It's a big red fat wire that supplies, uh, that takes the power from the alternator to basically the, the car. And there's a three-pronged plug that, that goes from the voltage regulator and it's supposed to be plugged in here. It was just hanging, it was dangling. Now there is a cooling shroud that goes over the back of this that bolts to the alternator so that the alternator can stay cool. It blows cool air from the engine fan through the back. So you couldn't see that. So whoever assembled the engine inadvertently left this unplugged. There's no retaining clip. Um, so I'm gonna try to figure out how to, maybe I can unscrew these guys and put tabs in here and put like a wire a cross or a zip tie. I have a feeling that's why. I took this alternator out. I took it and had it tested at the battery store down the street and it works fine. But it doesn't work if it's not plugged in. And it is such a bear to get to and it's so hard to get up in there. I understand how that could have worked its way out um, just from struggling to get this in from the last guy or maybe it, maybe it just rattled loose. So my task today is to figure out how to engineer that plug to stay in. Get the alternator back into the car, and hopefully we have something that charges. It's just one of those things. It's taken almost 30 years to get this car back on the road, and we're held up by one little plug, but it makes all the difference in the world. So once we get that fixed and the charging system going, then we can get on to pulling the steering column out of this Isetta, pulling the motor out of that one, and multiple other jobs in the shop. We are busy, 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 busy. And I think the one job we have at hand is to 
pet the dog. Have you guys like when I pet the dog? I think she's in here. She hides in here. Oh, there she is. She's in the driver's seat of the Monster Subaru 360. I haven't shown this car in a while. It is dusty. Look at the dust on that. Gauges. Stella, you want to say hi to everybody? Oh, look at you. Look at you, silly puppy. Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this. I'm standing underneath the 914. Here's the main power cord that takes all the power from the alternator. And here's the three-prong plug that has no apparent locking tab or anything to keep it inserted in the back of the alternator. This is the voltage regulator three-prong plug. And then you can see this is the cooling shroud for the back of the alternator. This is the inlet which goes up to there, which takes in cooling air from the fan. You can see it's very tight up in this area. It's very hard to get everything situated. And I think what happened is the last guy that put the alternator in probably plugged this in and then with twisting and trying to get the alternator up into the hole, that popped out. So let me show you what I've got planned. I've got these little aluminum brackets here that came off of something else and Either I can put one here and one here and then run a wire across to keep the plug in place. Or I can use this and drill a little hole in the side of the case here and run a zip tie across to keep that plug from coming out. I think that's where I'm going to go. I don't like drilling into anything, but we have to make sure that this plug does not pop out again. It's critical. So this is how I'm going to fix it and let's see how this works. So just to be clear, I put this little tab on here. It matches this one just as a kind of an engineering exploration. We have to be conscious this is a electrical device that's very hard to replace, to get at, and has to be very reliable. So if I drill in here, I don't want any metal shavings going into the thing. I don't want any chance for any parts to short out. And I am being watched very carefully by my shop dog, Stella. So what I did is I very carefully drilled a small hole through this retaining this fin on the back of the alternator. And I'm going to create a retainer from this bracket across the top of the voltage regulator plug through the wire so that that plug is connected and will not come apart. I was very careful not to get any metal shavings into the alternator. They all went into my lap and down to the ground and on the outside. And I made extra sure to tape the back so that we don't have any issues with the alternator failing. Let's try it out. All righty, 914 two-stroke turbo fans. We have a finished product. I'm going to show you. Not a lot of room to work up in here. The wires are only so long. Let's see which light works best here show you this so this is our main power cable that electricity generated by the alternator goes through this red wire goes up to the starter and if you notice i have let's see if i can get a better view of that the plug where the voltage regulator plugs into i have a nice non-conductive zip tie that holds that plug in in two places if you can see it's on the other side of the brown wire there and then on the left side of the red wire that's never going to come apart. So it's just super hard to work in this area. This cover, now the cooling cover, bolts to the back and it should clear this fine without any cutting or chafing. But the main problem and our main fear is having this plug pop off either by vibration or inserting the alternator back up into the hole. It's got to go back up in here. So this is my theory. Once we get it back together, we can test it. That was a lot of work. That was a bit of a struggle. It's very tight. Underside of this car is very clean. Brand new engine. Everything's clean. That's nice. All right, so our project of the day, our 914 1.8 liter that's being rebuilt here is back together. That was not easy to get the alternator back in there, but I got it back in there. You saw how I retained the voltage regulator plug. We have the old voltage regulator here. I think I showed this already. This is the one that was in the car. It's completely rusted and knackered. It's just nasty. I don't think that's gonna work. 
So I got a replacement one, but it's not the same size. I was told this is an electronic one. I'm going to plug it in. And let's see what happens here. It's plugged in the relay board. I've got power. I've got my volt beater on the car. We are showing 12 volts exactly. This could be it. Let's see what happens here. If it's fixed, this light should light up red when I turn the key on. It does not light up. That stinks. Let's turn the car on. I got nothing. So we still have an issue. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the voltage regulator out. And I've got a wire rigged from the positive terminal. And we are going to falsely energize the alternator by hitting D, was it D, F? So we now have a wire that goes from the positive battery cable to the D, F terminal, which would be this one right here. No. It'll be th D plus. Oh, I have it to D plus. I'm sorry. Okay, we got a light. The light is on. Let's see what happens now. I turn the key on. The light goes off. That's not good. It went off. Still 12 volts. Well, we know the light works. That helps. That was never working before, but we have more electrical gremlins to sort out. I'm going to pull this. Nothing burns down. I've got to do some more studying in the book. It's going to be another day. Oh my goodness. It's taking forever. That's what happens when you try to bring a car back from the dead. It takes a little bit of sorting, but you know what? It's worth it in the end. It truly is. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.